Hi, I'm Dave. Katya and I have teamed up with Neil from U.S. Captain's Training to bring you the Captain's Chat to vlog about interesting people in the marine industry. They share some of their life with us so we can share it with you. On this episode, we talk to the owner and founder of Navia, an electric foiling boat company. Come along with us as we go out for a ride on one of these boats to check it out. We have like three foils. Okay. Like we have two foils on the back and we have a canary foil on the front. Um, they are just like a regular airplane foils. Wings. Yeah. Just a second. So we have like three wings, the canary. They are actively controlled. Uh, 50 times per second. Like basically the aileron on the back is controlled like 50 times per second. So what would be the horsepower equivalent of the engines? This is actually the beauty of it. So that boat, it has 90 kilowatts peak, which I believe is around 120 horsepower. Each? Uh, each of them. Once I am up on foils, it requires less than 20 to go 20 knots an hour. Wow. On each of them. Yeah. What's the sea and state limit of the boat as far as how much wind can this take, how, many, how big of waves? So I have been comfortable with four feet chop out there and it has been just like amazing. So the boat, it feels just like now in a four feet chop. Wow. They are truly incredible. North Coast Marina, permission to come back here. So how fast were we going out there? So we went out like to 23, 25 knots. Okay. And what's your top point. speed? And like we made actually a pretty good U-turn with a probably like 20, 30 degree bank. Okay. So it, it can keep us actually like in a coordinated turn. So it, you, you, you didn't feel like it's right. throwing you out, right? When I was, and I didn't slow down or I didn't do basically anything. Just the system is so dialed in that it has like amazing control. If the system see that something is wrong, it's gonna land us down and it's gonna just allow us to get home until basically. If you hit a log or something that takes out a foil, a fishing net or a line from a crab pot, what's, uh, you know, what's gonna happen? So, okay, for example, the back foil right there, the one that's with the motor, has like a fuse building into the foil and like that's gonna allow you to basically eject the foil so it can be safe. So the hull should make that structure so you guys can be safe. Yeah. And can you adjust the depth of the foils? Yes, we can. So the boat can actually like uh, travel in uh, two feet, of two, three feet of uh, sea. Okay. Depth by retracting the foil. So the front, for example, it does go like up. Okay. It tracks the back. It's just like a regular outboard, plus it just it has the option actually to go up as well. Okay. So then we can go into a shallow water. Uh, yeah. if, you cannot actually see it down there, but there is actually a cubby that the foil actually go into and clears the hull. So you can actually beach that boat. Wow, okay. Yes, yeah, so just uh, nice. so when the foils, uh, So when the foils at the stern come up, does the whole motor rise up? The whole motor rise up, so yeah. it's basically like outboard, okay. independent. It goes up and tilts back yeah so okay. you're able to go on a trailer or you can go to the beach and just like well, use it as a regular boat yeah. so this is a boat and it's meant to do everything what a boat can handle 
plus it has the option to fly. Yeah. Put that cushion Is that a hydraulic pump? Uh, the this blue is thing? The, uh, yeah, it's a, it's so a, that's a the five electric. actuator. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, so that, that's what uh, operates like 50 pounds a second to keep the front stable. So it's like constantly adjusting the, yeah. you know, the yeah, so angle of approach on the fins? The, the flaps. So yeah. that's uh, that five controls uh, stability and uh, in concert with the back, it's also pitch. Right. And, 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 and then if you retract the foil up, does it come up through here like a dagger board on a yeah, small sailboat? Exactly. So this, okay. uh, there's a rack and pinion mechanism. This raises all the way up and it tucks in like Chris was talking about. Um, can you show me the battery bank? Uh, I can show you where the batteries are. Sure. So yeah, we have uh, two dual 42 and a half kilowatt hour batteries. One is here and one is under here. Uh, this is the main service hatch. Okay, I see. And we have, so that powers into, through these cables, the motors on top of both of these units. And then we actually have a drive shaft that runs uh, through the struts to the gearboxes at the bottom. Okay. And then, so Sam was saying this kicks up with a shear pin if you hit something. Yes, that's, so uh, where's... that's this unit. So this will be uh, automated, but right now that is a manual oh, okay. shear pin that you pull up. Oh, so uh, that's just like a shear pin on a, it's like, just uh, like a shear pin a on a snow blower. Yeah. In the setup. Uh, yeah, it's basically, so this is very similar to the like, tilt arm you'd have on an outboard. Yeah. So we have a tilt actuator there, and that's what keeps, when you stow the foils, they come up like two feet down from the water, and then you tilt them up to get them out of the water so they don't foul. Okay. Um, and then when we tilt it down, we lock the pin in, yeah. and then if we were to hit something, the fuse is the fuse in the pin that locks it into the transom bracket so that it shears a calculated level for safety. Okay. And then what's your... Passenger limit? Between, we're saying between six and eight people, depending on the configuration of the vessel. Okay. Yeah, so I'm Samridhi Bhattacharya. I'm, I'm the founder and the CEO of the company. Uh, how did I get into boating? Well, how did I get to build, start this company? Yeah. Um, my background has always been in deep tech, so, you know, everything from electrical engineering to being in physics, designing, you know, doing nuclear reactors to I used to be an aerospace engineer for NASA doing flight controls and, and um, it was during my time as a PhD student at MIT, I started building underwater drones. So I built some of the world's first underwater drones for ocean mapping. Um, and that's really when my attention turned to the ocean and maritime industry. I mean, I always thought I was going to either work in a space industry or start something there. Um, but it was when uh, the Malaysian airline got lost, actually, I was uh, amazed that we are talking about going to Moon and Mars, and, you know, we don't know how to find a massive airplane that gets lost in the ocean, which meant that how little we know about, you know, understanding 70% of the world. And I saw, like, the key technology drivers that are, you know, driving the evolution in land and air vehicles like whether that's in tesla whether spacex whether air taxis which is electrification cheaper faster computing and sensing scalable manufacturing and i thought if we apply that technology stack to maritime then what does the world look like what does the industry look like and it was obvious that with the tools we have today you are suddenly able to design marine vessels that are not just a little bit better but a step function better than anything you ever had, which is, you know, this boat, um, 10 times more efficient than a traditional gas boat. And what was more mind blowing was that if you could design vessels that are not only cleaner, but drastically more efficient, then suddenly you open up a whole new opportunity, a whole new form of scalable transportation on water, which has not been traditionally feasible before with smaller scalable vessels um, and you know turn waterways to highways so that was uh, the you know rundown from how I went from being hard stuff to boats yeah so did you do any boating growing up or no. anything <laughs> I, I, I don't think I think uh, I see it as a solution to a problem right? right and i see this as a as a building a robot and a machine um i have a lot of people who are into boating in my team i spend a lot of time on the water as a grad student um but i see this the same way you know i would design a car a rocket a spaceship 
is about how do you open up a frontier. You cannot get too attached to the, um, you need to have a great experience, but it's actually great to be a little bit outsider than too much of an insider because you have to be able to see things from the outside. Otherwise, you'll stick to how things have always been done. I mean, the company has three different aspects to its business, which is Navier OEM, Navier Transportation, and Navier Defense. Um, this is a platform, right? So the N30, essentially, how do you build a marine platform that is drastically more efficient, scalable? It's really a software at the core. Uh, it's very scalable to fleets, and even, you know, eventually you're looking at autonomous fleets. Um, when you think about that, um, you know, the applications are various, so whether that's a recreational boat, uh, and it's funny you ask whether I grew up boating, I do like being a lot on the water, and that from me, I often think that what would get people like me, like, attached to, like, really enjoying water, and, and that was a big part that drove the design decisions here also, that I, I wanted to, I mean, it's very high-tech looking, it's, it has a very high-tech feel, it has a futuristic feel, and it, it's, like, really easy to drive, dock, like, have you, as I, have you seen, like all yeah. of these design decisions are often driven by people that how did I get, like when I got into boating, uh, which is more in my adulthood, like especially while at MIT, um, I, you know, you, you realize that what are the things I like about being out on the water? How do I get more people like me to spend time in the water? Um, so that a lot of those drove the design decisions and the features it has. Uh, but coming back to, yes, yeah, so there's recreation. All of this uses the same platform, and the platform is like N30, and we have other sizes as well. And uh, for defense, I mean, we have developed probably the most advanced electric marine vessel to date, and there's a lot of technology stacks that are used in it um, that are relevant to the defense industry. Yeah. So with the ele electric drive system, is there an upper size limit of where it becomes inefficient? Like, can you do a, you know, an 80 foot passenger ferry, a, you can do, yeah. a 200 foot passenger, you know, yeah, ferry? Yeah, sure. Well, the, the thing with electric boats is like, I think, you know, at some point, I mean, you have to get, is it hydrogen or is it electric, right? The density of like fuel matters. So the question is, I mean, it's pretty easy to charge, but if you have a 300 feet boat I mean you have to start thinking about how do I charge this battery there's battery swapping maybe but maybe the way for bigger boats is uh, hydrogen right uh, our thesis initially is a lot around small vessels because the thing we are trying to solve is like I mean you have cars right but why don't pe people travel so much by cars but why don't people travel with small boats to like six passenger and the thesis is that that since boats are like 15 times more expensive like a same size boat uh, the efficiency of this boat is like similar to a small passenger car so that's the big unlock it's making like you know the every marina can be a transportation hub suddenly and uh, that's with a big ferry that's not possible because you need infrastructure and all that yeah. Yeah. So you have Tom in San Francisco with you know the water taxi. Yeah, yeah. His water taxi business. A any other, you know, a any anyone, any other water taxis? Yeah, we have business? lots of operators that are have signed up for this, and we have a uh, we'll be in, uh, announcing our initiative and rollout very soon. Right. Yeah. So what what other locations are the uh, other water taxis going to be at? Or just I mean, cities? Or I mean, you, you can see in every coastal cities, right? I mean, think about New York is so great. I mean, it's a perfect place. I yeah. went from the Jersey City to here. I mean, it's an Uber was 45 minutes yesterday, and it was five minutes across the water. I mean, it's amazing. So it's funny. I mean, you know, we are thinking of air taxis. We are thinking of digging a tunnel. The water is right there. Yeah. Like, and this is practical. And what's really interesting is, um, you know, just like what the transportation network does, right? When you make a marina more accessible, every marina is a transportation hub, more small businesses develop around it. You know, the land value, like more affordable housing can develop there. So people can, especially in San Francisco or other places, people can live a little bit farther from the city, cut the traffic, get to the work much faster, and still have accessible housing in a much more livable places in and around the you know, main, main city. Right. So. Uh, yes. uh, so, so how long did it take from when you were like, okay, I'm going to start this company to today? Huh. Um, it has been an iteration, right? I mean, you used to do different kinds of marine vessels and stuff. So you have been always thinking of like scalable marine fleets. And 
Uh, but this particular idea of building autonomous water taxis with hydrofoil was what, around 2020, uh, but we really started building it uh, after fundraising was 2022, last year in January. So this is probably build time-wise is one of the fastest built TV. Uh, yeah. In 10 months, we have gone from, you know, just a sketch to like having this. We have our first boat in 13 months. We have the second boat. Um, so yeah, the development time has been pretty fast. And uh, Paul Beaker, our naval architect, our, is incredible. And so has been our shipyard, Lyman Morris. Yeah, so we're, we're, were both of these built at Lyman Morris? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're actually, we're going to interview them this winter too. Oh, cool. Um, nice. So, and so they're, they're, uh, the, the whole of these is the same. It's the same whole mold? Yeah. Both of these? Yeah. Sand 30 platform. So what's the, what's the construction of the hull to keep, to keep the boat as light as possible? What is that? Uh, the, oh, carbon fiber. Okay. It's all carbon fiber. Yeah. yeah. And is there is there a foam core to it, or is there any core to it, or just a solid carbon it's, hull? It has a core, but like uh, it's mostly all carbon fiber. Okay. And the foil carbon fiber too. Yeah. So what? Yeah, you know, we're talking about this a little bit um, <clears throat> out there, but what's you? So, you know, if you hit a log or debris in the water and you take out a foil, mm -hmm. what's gonna? Like, you know, you're doing thirty knots. You hit a you hit a log. Yeah. the foil take out a take out the front foil what's gonna what's well, gonna happen yeah. to the boat to just keep it from nose diving in um you know if you have a very violent crash you're just yeah. gonna fall off of your foil and but it, we have fallen off from my we have simulated lots of failure cases actually and it's i don't know if you're in a normal gas boat going over chops yeah i are in your boat or i don't think that fall feels anything more different than like going over a big wave like that's true big wave so and we will get used to just suddenly being smooth and suddenly having that chop but like yeah. it's, it's nothing so different you're not falling from a big height or anything um so you know it's a very stable boat but mm -hmm. the thing is like this is also super safe boat so the one thing that is good about this boat for example there are two motors so mm -hmm. even let's say when something happens to your foil um you can limp back with yeah. a single motor limb back home right and the other one is but the falls are also made that you actually don't entirely lose. I mean, unless it's a, something, you know, you run into something crazy, but like uh, the falls are retrievable, so they shear off, but it still gets tied, so you can actually retrieve the uh, foil. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, that's a that's a really good point. Um, you know, it's no different than any other boat doing 25, 30 knots in the yeah, top. Yeah, and you, but just you, you just fall off a foil. Yeah, it's just kind of the thought of like, no, oh, that boat's flying above the water. What happens if all of a sudden it collapses onto the water? Yeah, yeah but it's, it's cold a, feet. And you yeah. go on a cold feet. Any questions? That Either is. of you guys? Oh, the name? Come up, yeah. Fluid dynamics. Uh, Navier Stokes equation. So, Claudia Louis Navier is a you know, very famous person, and you do fluids, all the equations you do. Um, done solved millennium price problem navier stokes equation in fluid dynamics i mean there's are equations you use for you know any fluid designs and uh, just like there is test lighting navier's contribution is huge and yeah. played a very prominent role in my grad school life so <laughs> i guess but i i think it's kind of cool because everybody thinks it's navigation yes you know, yeah navy but uh, it's actually after named after the scientist 